this weekend was all about deep penetration. I can't take it anymore. They're so dirty. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 11 of Number One Crude Mistakes with myself, Glenn, from Number One Projects, Avard from Behind the Mistakes and KJ from Crude But Efficient. And whoop whoop, we beat the odds and made it past episode 10. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Every episode is a celebration from now on, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we got, we got a good uh, hand uh, helping us last week with Thomas. Yeah. So it's a... Uh... Feels like a fresh start. It was great fun mix- mixing it up, but it also feels nice just to be the three of us again. Yes. It's yeah. like coming home from a, from a nice trip or something like that. <laughs> yeah. It was good to be away, but it's nice to get home. Yeah, I didn't I didn't have to brush my hair and put a shirt on this evening because it was just the three of us. <laughs> like putting an old comfy pair of slippers on. <laughs> oh, we, we, thought, we thought you made an effort, but then we realized, oh, it's his wife walking around in the background because you just uh, connected everything and just left your laptop on the <laughs> counter there and left us. So when we joined in it's like where is glenn oh there he is I, looking young and fresh this week <laughs> <laughs> i turned everything on and said i'm just nipping to the loo keep an eye on the uh, screen see if anybody joins and then i came <laughs> back and she's cussing at me i said oh look kj's there she went Oop, and ran away <laughs> so guys where should we start shall we start with you both made purchases recently and uh, quite interested to know what your experiences are. So, KJ, you got a new router. Yes. Um, well, I, I got a router. I haven't, I haven't had one before. So oh, I, okay. bought, I finally uh, bought a Makita Palmrite router, uh, the classic style you see in, uh, in uh, CNCs and that sort of thing, yeah. because I found a, a really good deal uh, on a used one. Um, so I, I just... I haven't used it yet. I just started up to see that it functions. And I haven't had time to actually try it out. Uh, I think that will be... Yeah, it's probably after Christmas. I have have some plans. Probably. You're not going to use it until before Christmas? Don't think I'm going to have time because I have other projects lined up before it. <laughs> I don't need to route anything right now. <laughs> Did you ever use that table saw that you got? Uh, no, I haven't used that either. <laughs> How long have you had that now? Well, a month or something like that. Maybe a little bit more. I will use that Gosh. before I will use the router, I think. <laughs> you got to cut the piece of wood first and then route it. <laughs> possibly, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in no hurry. <laughs> There's always the possibility of just like slipping a project in between other projects. I've seen people do that with <laughs> various degree of success. <laughs> do you have anything special in mind? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Just a never-ending stream of deadlines. <laughs> <laughs> How are the projects coming on, Havard? Well, it's I'm a bit behind, but I had a couple of evenings where I really felt I got some progress going but yeah still behind now i'm focusing on the the turgworks challenge because well i also realized that i need to finish it in time <laughs> to do the edit <laughs> which, which is basically this weekend so uh, yeah when we're finishing up this podcast tonight i'm also going to do some sanding so yay <laughs> <laughs> is this just on that little tiny handle yeah It is something oddly satisfying about putting in an overly (laughs) amount of hours into something really tiny and mundane. It's like over-engineering something. It's uh, it's weirdly pleasurable. But still you managed to to squeeze squeeze in another project. Oh, yeah. I I forgot about that one, yeah. Yeah. I made a holder for our kids' uh, Yoto player, which is this magical card fairy tale playing thingamajig. But yeah, um, 
it needed a holder so i just knocked that out and that's a proper one day project well except i needed the glue to dry overnight but a 24 hour project <laughs> yeah in total so yeah oh, that turned out nice yeah yeah i was really pleased about that um oddly enough the one thing I'm most pleased with with the entire video is the thumbnail. <laughs> because I was just playing around with AI and just peppering you with <laughs> a lot of hilarious choices and then one popped up, ooh, this is actually kind of nice. <laughs> so, yeah. It's scary what you can do. Uh, the thing I, I like the thing I liked most about the, the video was uh, the part where you sneezed. I'm pretty sure that I, it looked like a moment you were standing, it took a break, sneezed, and then continued working. It looked like it anyway. I read it as you sneezing. I have to watch the video again. <laughs> I have no recollection of me sneezing or <laughs> at least not seeing myself doing it. Yeah, <laughs> let's pause the buttons. Yeah, maybe I was hallucinating. Yeah, everyone should go uh, and watch uh, Hogwarts with you again to see. <laughs> is he sneezing well, recently? <laughs> I can't believe you've just put an Easter egg in in Havard's video for him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be cool. We could, when one of us makes a video one time, we could do a live commentary while watching it, <laughs> and then and then that can be the voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> like the director's cut commentary on a yeah yeah that could yeah work. that would could work. work. So how about you? Any progress on any projects this week? I mean, uh, let's start with you, KJ, so then Glenn can finish off talking about his toilet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I have some, had some, some progress. Uh, this weekend was all about deep penetration because I was welding 10 mil steel plates together. And boy, that Gosh. took a while. <laughs> how, many, how many runs of weld did you run across to get through 10 mil? Uh, it was a couple. Uh, <laughs> I only used uh, two and a half millimeter electrodes. So, so yeah, it was weld, grind, oh, some spots, weld, grind, yeah. <laughs> weld, grind, <laughs> until I said, thought it is good enough. I'm just wondering what kind of medieval weapon is he making now? <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the, the Christmas tree stand. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like so, uh, half a meter times half a meter of 10 mil steel plate because this tree is not going to fall down, is the plan. Um, oh, you do have quite a tall tree, don't you, actually? Yeah, yeah, a little bit yeah. bigger than normal. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I, I did my best to keep it from, uh, from moving, but it's cupped a bit like a five millimeter rise because it's two plates welded together and they... Yeah. It was a bit of a rise, but yeah, I'm, I'm considered that to be a feature instead because it's it's really well balanced on the four corners now. Oh, fantastic. If you put it the right side up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, as long as you chop down a nice full tree, you'll not see it anyway, will you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's always the wonky side as well that you're trying to hide, so you just find the best possible angle for both the tree and the foot <laughs> yeah i mean and the foot will be covered with presents on the big day when everyone's gonna look at it so it's fine it's fine any progress on the scapa festival and um video kj uh yeah i think i actually might be done now because i, I wasn't pleased with i mean that, that's the hard part with having an an edit without any consistent timeline i mean it's not like building something from a to b to c to d it's just a lot of random clips that can go anywhere yeah. so then you have to find the flow instead and i wasn't really <laughs> pleased with it but now I've, I've moved stuff around and and made one clip in reverse uh, if anyone can spot <laughs> that they're really good <laughs> just to get because i was just filming right left and center and yeah stuff doesn't really go well together. So it will probably be released 
about the time as this episode. Maybe a couple of days before. We'll see. Well, I'm I'm editing, so about Christmas then. <laughs> <laughs> Which is nice since it's yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I didn't get those sleigh bells I ordered from AliExpress in time. <laughs> so what about you, Glenn? Have you had any progress on any projects? Uh, only on the indoor projects. Um, I've been really, really busy at home doing stuff. I had three cubic meters of firewood delivered on Saturday morning, so that took a bit of shifting round the back to get in the uh, log store. And then I've been full-blown working on the bathroom and um, that's nearly there now just a just a long waste lay or waste pipe to run and then um, pretty much chuck everything in there the floors down the skirting boards in there I've literally just got to put the toilet and the sink in there now <laughs> and you know plumb them in which won't take very long at all so everything is in the toilet except the toilet yes <laughs> yeah that's actually in the dining room <laughs> <laughs> As it should, <laughs> obviously. <sighs> and I have point. uncharacteristically started another project at the same time as this one. I've actually started on the office as well now. And so I'm you're not... doing the entire house, is it? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so the next time we'll see a video from you is next year or something like that. Um, no, I don't. I don't see the office being such a big deal, to be honest with you. It's quite a basic um, room. So I've got plasterboard arriving on Friday, um, which I'll... I think that even qualifies you for the Three Northern Maker Challenge. Oh, no, they can't be full (laughs) sheets. (laughs) Uh, I thought it it was as long as it was sheets, then it was okay. I was thinking You weren't supposed to buy anyone, so... (laughs) I was thinking about that challenge yesterday. I've got an idea for it, and I messaged um, messaged um, the three northern makers on their Discord and um, asked, you know, when when the deadline is. And I've got to the tenth of December, so that's loads of time, isn't it? That's next. Yeah, month. that's like almost next year. I know, right? <laughs> 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 yeah. So uh, I don't know. I might I might try and start that at the weekend. As well, I don't know. We'll see. Get all these I'm just aiming ideas. for the. I'm just aiming for the participation trophy, so <laughs> it's all fun. Yeah, Are you I've doing already given the makers up. one as well. Well, I, I was thinking about it, and of course, I, I posted uh, on Instagram that ooh, maybe I should add some sheet material to the cheese slicer project, so then I could do two entries at once. Yeah. And then then someone said, well, there's probably also a cooking challenge somewhere, so you can do a three for one. <laughs> and then like, ooh, you're on. I mean, scouring the internet for a cooking challenge or some, some sort. I mean, it has yeah. got a sharp edge on it as well, so maybe you could do it as the knife along at the same time. I mean, look, look at yeah. all these jobs you could cross yeah. off. You know, I was thinking of the knife along here the other day, and while I was looking for something else, I stumbled over a knife with a really nice blade, and I was thinking, hmm, maybe I should just buy that one and pop the handle off, and then I can make my own handle to that and really make it easy. <laughs> I don't think that counts. You could, no. um, you guys like to use wooden knives, don't you? You could uh, just make a wooden one. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Butter knives uh, yeah. is the rage in Norway. Uh, yeah. And of course, uh, I have a design which I bought in plastic. But I think they would be really nice in oak. So just doing some oak scraps and just re them to the right thickness. And then I could easily pop out a few knives in an evening. So, uh, mm. But then again, I do want to do some steel work. So <laughs> I have a plan, but I can't this close too much yeah i've be ordered a tormac so you can sharpen it properly afterwards and yeah of course you, know, uh, <laughs> you didn't need any excuse to get a new tool exactly <laughs> yeah and the tormac now got a, a black edition as well i so saw that's that. a 
cool. Yeah. <laughs> and there, there is a competition. You can win one. I saw that this evening yeah. on Instagram. I don't. I'd never enter any of these contests or something. I mean, it's. I never win anything, so why bother? <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was thinking to myself, I never win anything. And then I was thinking to myself, I never enter any of these things as well. So maybe the two that go hand in hand. <laughs> I was going to say, a, a tour mag would be such a waste on me because I never sharpen anything and I <laughs> I have like no skill in doing it either. So I would... <laughs> If I got one, I would have to take courses, and um, that, that would be a wouldn't be a gift. That would be a, a trap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Same here. Basically, last time I sharpened my axe, I did it with the angle grinder, and it turned yeah. out actually kind of decent. Yeah. <laughs> Done the same. <laughs> Apart from you uh, overheat it when you do it with the angle grinder, don't you? So and it suddenly stays sharp yeah. for the first couple of hits. Yeah, you have yeah. to be care- careful with that, but yeah. Um, yeah, no, I made mine glow. But I, ha- I have this. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be proper sharp. <laughs> it's like yeah. splitting logs with a with a yeah. piece of chocolate, a sharp piece of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I do have this romantic image of myself at some point having all these uh, proper sharp, chisels mm-hmm. doing a hand mitered uh, lap joints or what the fuck they're called i don't <laughs> even know but probably it's just gonna make a nice french cleat holder for them and they're gonna stay the rest of their life on my wall <laughs> where i yeah. still use the the same old chisel which i sharpened with an angle grinder mm. <laughs> just hacking away <laughs> i don't deserve the sharp fancy chisels i wouldn't treat them nice yeah. I, I, I do sharpen them. mine. I do sharpen my chisels. It literally takes a couple of minutes if you keep on top of it. Yeah, I mean, um, you have to sharpen them after you've used them to split some rocks and dig in the ground <laughs> and that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Open the paint tins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so hitting the nail on the head there. I'll probably open more cans of paint with my chisel than anything else. <laughs> I actually have three sets of chisels. So I have the fancy ones, which live on the French cleat wall, which I did use the other day to make some lap joints. <laughs> and then um, I have a pair that, you know, when you, I don't know, you, you've got a piece of framing in the house or something and you just want to knock a big ho- big hole out of it or something. And then I've got a piece that I knock the shit out of with the hammer. And then um, I have another set, which I use for breaking rocks and opening tins. <laughs> <laughs> But that being said, I actually have a multi-tool, um, which I use for a lot of that stuff. And it like took me a while. No, it's even better than a Leatherman. Um, and I didn't realize what it was for until recently, but it is like a flat-headed screwdriver. <laughs> but it is bent, and it's the kind of tool they use to pick out the dirt and the grime for the horse's hoofs. Mm. But that's a tool that's brilliant for a lot of things. Scraping, chiseling, and of course, opening paint cans and whatever. So that's, I've been using that for years, not knowing what it was. It's like and a mini someone pry told bar. me, Yeah. And then someone said, why do you have one of those? And they, well, what do you mean? That's... Uh, that's like a all around uh, everyday carry tool. Doesn't everyone have that? Yeah, if you're into horses, then <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just thinking you've you've obviously stolen it, and there's a poor horse somewhere walking around with really dirty feet. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> and I also have. Uh, I was looking for something here the other day, and I actually have a, a specialty plier for actually not sharpening saw blades, but actually putting the right angle on the tooths, right and left. So it's a special uh, like plier for that. Setting tool. Yeah. Never used it. But <laughs> then again, the, the saws that I have are the cheapest one. Uh, and of course, I use mm. them 
for mm. rocks and everything, but never sharpen them. So maybe I should get maybe on an online marketplace like the an old timey saw, so I actually can use that for something in its lifetime. <laughs> that just looks like a ball ache sharpening and resetting the teeth every week on your fancy saw. Yeah. No, I, I buy the two for two for a tenner down at the local DIY store and they go through a progression. First they cut wood, then they open <laughs> bags of cement. <laughs> and occasionally they cut turf. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm really bad at throwing the old used ones away. Just get a get a new one and hang it in front and then have a generations of swans behind it <laughs> that I really should just throw at least half of them away but that might be useful someday for something I don't know what, when, where but maybe yeah, you should just get yourself um, a setting tool and a, and a sharpener and you can start the process all over <laughs> again with each one yeah because I have those copious amounts of time to <laughs> to spend just <laughs> meditatively sharpen the I saw, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I actually had a cleanup here very early this year where I actually, well, I can't get myself to throw away tools, but I just gathered some of the really crappy ones and the ones I realized I will never use and I put them in a box and then I went to the recycling center because they also have like shelves where you can put decent things up for grabs. So I just, uh, while I was lifting that box of tools, of course, a lot of people just saw, ooh, <laughs> tools. So actually the, the case was empty before I even got it up on the shelf because people were just throwing themselves at me, just like, ooh, are throwing this one away? Why this one? <laughs> well, Those are the flea market boxes you look most deeply in. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I probably, probably would have taken half of them. I went to the recycling center just the other day and there's a sign up as you go into ours. You can't, you can't, you're not allowed to take anything away from there. You're not allowed to trade while you're there. Yeah. And literally. It's not just even, a, not even trade when you're there. I mean, give someone else something. No. You no, have you to can't. go outside to do that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Around the corner on the backside, like yeah. trading yeah. cigarettes like in high school. Like a market outside. You want to, <laughs> If you have a saw, I have a chisel. Huh? So you scratch my back, I scratch yours. <laughs> oh, I've got a back scratcher. <laughs> Shoe horn. <laughs> so anything else happened last, yeah. last week? Uh, I now have tickets from Maker Central Yay. at 50% off. Oh, How much God. did you pay? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Do you know what? Yeah, that's good. Fuck Maker make Central. I got in there really <laughs> early, and then they go early. Ten percent, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's uh, actually a nice thing to be <laughs> on the back burner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good on you. Good on you. No, that's really good going. It's. Uh, I saw the um, saw the thing come up and I thought, bastard, have I got in on that action? KJ, yeah. I thought I thought you might get it, but you'd already bought yours, hadn't you? So. Yeah, yeah, I've already set up booked. But Hotel don't worry. Plane everything. <laughs> but don't worry, I haven't ordered the plane tickets, which I'm going to forget about. And then, of course, in April, oh shit, I need airplane tickets. And then the one remaining tickets, I'm probably going to pay like 100 grand for or something like that. So. <laughs> yeah, something like that. My plane ticket's definitely going to be cheaper. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting seeing you flying there, I think. I'll probably have a really bloody expensive breakdown on the way there now. <laughs> you know, with the car, not, not a personal in, breakdown. In all fairness, you should. Yeah, but talking about making sense. I think that's fair, KJ. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I'll try not to be mean to you again. I'm not making any promises, though. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is something I, I've thought about since we mentioned Maker Central last. That that going to Man Maker Central can mean so different things to different people, because for for some people, going to Maker Central means going to the actual event Maker Central. But 
for us makers, going to Maker Central is part, partly going to the event, but mostly meeting other makers. And that means hanging out in a hotel bar until the wee hours of the night. Probably Hilton. Last year, it was uh, a Hilton uh, every night. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. Um, so that's Gosh. something you definitely shouldn't miss if you're a maker going to Maker Central. Don't sit in your hotel room. Don't don't go home too early. Find out where the where the hangout is, because there's a lot of people just having a pint, talking to other people they haven't met the last since the last year. People they haven't met in real life, just chatted online and that sort of thing. So I can really really recommend uh, doing that. Yeah, sounds good. I'm Sounds like that. a speed dating event. <laughs> it can be if you want to, if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, Are you still taking the, uh, the the daughter with you, Havard? Yeah, yeah. I'm making so, a trip of it, and then that kind of, of rules we, you out uh, of the late night uh, bar talk, then, doesn't it? Uh, we'll see. I mean, you still have to <laughs> eat dinner somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And of course, it's it's a holiday, so bedtime is uh, flexible. Yeah. But yeah, I'm making a, a large weekend out of it. So I haven't decided when we're going down yet. I think we we're going to fly to London and then take the train. But then it would like be nice to have the morning train up. So then maybe we should go a, a day in advance. And then I really got my oldest now into the theater so i also tend to attend at least one musical every time i'm in london so maybe i should try to introduce her to that as a part of the entire holiday so nice. we'll see yeah, yeah there's oh, always yeah. a good musicals on in london i think how many times have you yeah. been to london Can't really four or five maybe, right? Yeah. That's how many times I've been? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> once. <laughs> Same as me then. Yeah. <laughs> what musical yeah. did you see? I I saw Wicked. <laughs> I saw Starlight Express when that was still on. Actually, that was really good. <laughs> nice, nice. But yeah, I hated nice. London and swore never to go back. <laughs> well, it, I love the city, but. I mean, the hotels are dirty and expensive. Of course, if you're going to have a proper hotel room, it's extremely expensive. And I mean, the prices has gone up considerably since the last time I was there. So, yeah. So, and of course, after we got kids just dropping off to London for a weekend is not top priority anymore. What is top priority? Washing machines? <laughs> Having yeah. a functioning washing machine. Having a... Any updates on the new washing machine, Havad? How's it going? Oh, there's... oh there are <laughs> updates. <laughs> <laughs> really updates. Um, yeah, well, uh, the last one uh, went up in flames, or at least it would have if I didn't unplug it. Um, and of course... Uh, as uh, parents for two small kids, uh, the washing machine is the epicenter of our entire existence, so we had to get a new one. Luckily, we managed to hold it off until the first day of uh, Black Week, whatever, so we got one at uh, a decent price. Brought it home, um, connected it up, and said to ourselves, or to be fair, I said to myself that, all right, we'll wait until the kids have gone to sleep and then we'll read the manual and then we'll see if we give it a maiden run. Never read the manual, um, started it and then uh, went out for a bit. And when we got in again, my wife just, why are the washing machine like facing plant down on the floor? <laughs> what? <laughs> what you mean? So it turns out that it has walked itself over the ledge of the table it's standing on during the spin cycle and just face planted um 
luckily, uh, like the the wireframe shelving system that we have on the wall broke the fall, and of course the um, the drain pipe coming out of it, uh, which is like the accordion type, which is the flexible kind of type uh, it actually held it back as well so i think it had a very slow fall uh, but some of the markings on the front door indicates that it finished the spin cycle uh, facing down on the floor uh, so it it doesn't really look uh, brand spankingly new yet uh, so we propped it up and realized that there's no way we can bring this back to the shop and try to explain <laughs> that and whatever. Um, and realizing we don't have the time to get it anywhere to have someone have a look at it. So I opened it up, uh, figured out if we're lucky, it's only changing the drain pipe that needs doing. So that's what I did today. And I've had uh, another test run and it seems to be working perfectly. Have you chained it to the wall? No, uh, I did think about doing that, but the reason why it walked itself off the ledge was actually the... Is that how depressing it is at your house? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I can't take it anymore. (laughs) They're so dirty. I'm going to spend my life here. Okay, end it now. (laughs) On the, on the back side of it, there is three bolts which are uh, secure the inner drum during transit because yeah. there is uh, the entire drum is uh, suspended. And of course, not removing those, you don't have any suspension. That means that every vibration is then just transferred straight into the chassis. <laughs> and that's the reason why it started walking off. Uh, so when I remove oh, those sorry, bolts, um, oh. it works perfectly. <laughs> Very quiet, very low vibrating. Yeah, <laughs> we got a so, new machine um, this year, and it um, it had a sticker right across the front saying "Remove the bolts from the back before using." Yeah, we we, uh, we laughed about that, me and my wife, because there was a huge <laughs> sticker there, but that said, like, "Ooh, this one comes with steam cleaning and whatever." It's like, why didn't they just put in big letters <laughs> "Remove this bolt before pushing start"? But no. <laughs> That was in very small letters on page five of the user manual. <laughs> Shouldn't that be able to it have some kind of sensor feeling that the bolts are in? And should it be able to start it? Yeah, it's a metal bolt. You could connect that to a relay breaking yeah. the circuit. So as long as they're in, you can never power it on. That's yeah. uh, that's a five cent uh, safety measure. Yeah, it's. I mean, it has. I'm sure it has a lot of other error messages to spew at you if you do something wrong. So that really should be one of them. Yeah, but then again, I got to think about. I got to think about Thomas from Mellow Labs, who said that he opens up everything he buys new just to see what it is on the inside. And I now know how my brand new washing machine looks inside out. <laughs> I just want to explain to the listeners or the CMOs, as they're now known, is that Havard's face is not happy when he's telling us this story. I just look <laughs> genuinely angry about all of this. <laughs> Me and KJ, yeah, I have uh, <laughs> got a different look <laughs> on our faces. Yeah, I'm just laughing, I mean, not to cry. <laughs> if I have all look at my left arm, it looks like the entire ordeal made me so depressed that I cut myself. But it's actually all the sharp edges on the, no. the sheet metal on the washing machine. Because, of yeah. course, if you're removing some of the internal parts, there is a an order of which you remove everything. But I don't want to do that. So I just removed the back <laughs> cover and realized I can get my hand in there. So then I start with a flashlight put that inside there and then i just had to throw the pliers in because i couldn't get my hand in while holding them and then stretch my arm in and then peeked and all right that's the thing i need to reach and then stuck my hand in there then i couldn't see anything and like so most likely the the flashlight is still in there somewhere <laughs> but <laughs> did you do a check to see how many tools did you have going in how many tools after like I surgery actually did a count yes i didn't <laughs> want to didn't want to open it up again. And of course, also the the IKEA 
table stand, which is actually lifted up on. Um, I actually broke that uh, when we lifted it up. So we do have some Ikea repair to do as well, <laughs> but that's for after Christmas. You've got a guy on the inside at Ikea as well, haven't you? You said last week. Yeah, yeah I do. So uh, spare parts are easy to come by. Um, <laughs> But that means we have to lift it off again and, of course, uh, fix the IKEA bench and then lift it up again, which I really dread. So I might buy the bench parts and assemble those and then wait until Christmas dinner or something when we have guests over. And by the way, uh, can you help me lift the washing machine? <laughs> yeah, because uh, it's really heavy, aren't it? Like a, doesn't it have like a big uh, cement block or something to? Yeah, several cement blocks inside, so they are crazy heavy, and also the there is no handle on them, so there's no decent way of lifting it. Don't you have any floor space? Do you need to lift it up? <laughs> well, it, it is nice to have it in. I mean, I'm forty plus, so bending down to fill and take out of the washing machine is tedious so it's nice to have it so in lifting like... up something that weighs like 30 kilos <laughs> yeah but that's a one-time ordeal it should unless be a one-time uh, unless ordeal. you <laughs> yeah <laughs> unless you don't read the instruction and need to well it got itself down so i didn't have to think about that so <laughs> we just need to get it up again silver lining <laughs> You're the uh, youngest one out of the three of us, Havada. I can't believe you're having difficulty bending over and doing things like that already. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a it's a downward slope. Started at yeah. 25 when I realized my knees make sound, which is that normal? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I feel my body's falling apart more and more every day the last couple of years. I've I've given it a fair bit of abuse, uh, and of course now I'm paying for it. But still, like what I needed to do has also changed, so it works for the intended purpose as of today. So I'm I'm still not hitting the gym to try to compensate for the downfall. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> as long as I sit still, nothing hurts. As long as you don't sit still for too long. Yeah, that's the problem, man. That's a problem as well. Yeah. That's when I start aching, literally at the Christmas holidays and you know, when I'm just sat, that's when I start to hurt. As long yeah. as I keep moving, I'm okay. I mean you're active all the day, all the time. I am. You're gonna be one of those uh, old types that you have to beat death to be, get rid of because you're going to be <laughs> just, just going a little bit slower all the time but still moving constantly yeah that, that's something I've realized that of course during my daytime job uh, I do a lot of sitting in front of a computer and of course after also venturing into YouTube um, with uh, <laughs> added time editing videos uh, I do spend quite a lot of time in front of a computer at home as well, <laughs> which is related to the stuff I'm doing in the workshop. And I also realized that I, I don't actually do much like vertical movement in the workshop as well. It's a lot standing up or sitting down there as well. So yeah, <laughs> sometimes I just go for a walk just to <laughs> at least change the scenery <laughs> maybe what you want to do is uh, rearrange your workshop so everything's just in the wrong place so the two things that you use together like a tape <laughs> the measure work. and a pencil are at opposite ends and at different <laughs> heights <laughs> the oh, work yeah, the, out the... workshop <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a video <laughs> idea <laughs> but that i'm already doing that i'm i'm living that i mean there is uh, the, the tools i use the most are always out, but they're never where you need them. So I think if I tried to change that system, I would probably just end up improving <laughs> my workshop <laughs> infrastructure. <laughs> so Havard, I've been meaning to ask, what happened to the collaboration with you and Mellow Labs? Not heard anything about that for ages. No, we uh, we do talk about it from time to time, but we both have a tendency of. Uh, projects uh, creeping up on us <laughs> and then uh, 
turns out if you're doing a collaboration, you should have a, a, an end goal and a, probably like a progress plan or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, you need yes. more input than a message on WhatsApp uh, <laughs> every second week <laughs> <laughs> with some sketches and thoughts. So, yeah. So distance is a bit of an issue when it comes to a collaboration then. Yeah, uh, at some point we need to to ship uh, something in between ourselves, and then of course it's it's the hassle of what if it gets lost or broken, then you have to ship it back again because I can't fix what he's doing and vice versa. So <laughs> it's not going to happen, is it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Well, you can meet at Maker Central in one part, and then meet next year at Maker Central and do it in another part. And... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, maybe you could we just are going to meet up at Maker Central, so maybe that's the solution. Maybe it would be nice to finish it off by then. But yeah, <laughs> if you both book an extra day there, you could nip over to my workshop and use that together for a day. <laughs> yeah, that we could do. I mean, that is something we all could do, basically, like a workshop invasion. <laughs> <laughs> like just in the gold. In the good old days, yeah. when the Scandies uh, just traveled over. And... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I saw I just... that uh, our Australian counterparts had a big meetup just a couple of weeks ago. And that looked really nice. There were like 20, 30 people or something like that. And they went over to each other's workshops and that sort of thing. That l looked really, really nice. But then you have to have some people with workshops relatively close to each other so we i mean to just drive over to the other one and, and make a day out of it and yeah. i don't i feel i don't know enough makers in the same vicinity <laughs> to actually make that work i watched the uh, no. fix it fingers uh, video on that i thought it was a lovely video but the thought of having other people in my workshop touching all my stuff like get out get out <laughs> stop messing <laughs> This is my safe space. Yeah. <laughs> I said to come around and have a look, not touch. <laughs> well, I, I would feel oddly or unusual comfortable with that. The worst is when people that have no workshop experience and they realize you have a workshop with a lot of tools and they ask you if... Do you have a tool to do? And then they try to explain what they want to do. They don't even know what the tool is called. <laughs> and I was like, all right, you want to borrow something you don't know the name of. Rather, <laughs> and you and then at least you don't you don't even know what it's costing me to buy that. <laughs> and like you don't know even the name. So yeah. I sometimes I, I've, I've, I've lent out tools, uh, but uh, that's the one thing I really dislike. And I have a couple of tools I never got back as well. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> but, I, never lend, and everything. I never lend anything out that I'm not w willing to lose. I'm just, it, it's, it's going to be a, a grand surprise if I get it back. <laughs> I had a worse yeah. experience last, I think it was last year, one of my neighbors came down and said, uh, could I borrow a circular saw off you? I was like, yeah, sure. And I literally just put a new blade in the circular saw, handed it to him. I said, what are you doing? He said, uh, just going to cut up, I'm going to cut up some old fence panels. <laughs> oh, great. Let's go through nails and all sorts. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Never got the benefit of that new blade. That's oh. where you're going to have to have uh, spares of all the tools. So you have the ones you use yourself and the one you lent out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like it's like, old, <laughs> it's like the in the carp carpentry lessons at school where they had like an old box of used uh, sandpaper where we ran to be the first one to see if we can find something that had actually any traction left on it. So you should have that in your workshop as well, uh, like a uh, like the box of the tools that you lend to people. So when someone comes around asking, "Oh, look in that green box over there." <laughs> that same guy uh, the same guy the same neighbor was doing um, a, a horse box as a making it into a, a small living space he still not finished it but um, he would he was wanting to line the inside with some rough wood that he'd got but he wanted to smooth all the wood out and he was eyeing up my thickness of planer 
<laughs> it's like, no way, mate. <laughs> oh, I'm not having that. <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> Yeah, not not even if you buy me new blades no. afterwards. That's no, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, but it it might just be in my head. But after we had the contractor digging around uh, our property, he removed a lot of the well, the ground around the. The corner of our house so actually the the outside wall for from my workshop is now exposed to open air and of course then you don't have the like the insulating power of all the the gravel on the outside so i actually feel my workshop is colder now than it used to be hmm. which has always been kind of cold because winter? It might be, and of course, um, I can see through around the perimeter of my uh, <laughs> garage door, so it's uh, it's not very <laughs> insulated to begin with. So, to look into, yeah, but we're also thinking about uh, breaking in the, that entire wall and just putting in a door, and of course me getting a external shop so that we can convert the entire workshop to a bedroom or something. So it, it feels wrong spending a lot of hours and money on fixing that uh, garage door opening. Yeah. Like we're planning yeah. to pull it out within a year or something. So Yeah, and you still want it, want something big to you so you can move all, the, all your stuff. If yeah. you're going to move stuff uh, out, you don't want to have a little door. Yeah, I mean, actually, the the garage door is basically the size of the entire wall. And that is yeah. brilliant for a workshop that you can actually just open one entire wall for moving stuff in and out. So whenever I get a new workshop, that is a, a need-to-have item. What available uh, space have you got for a new workshop? In theory... We have a decent amount of room uh, for building a workshop, um, but uh, the inclination of that part of our lot is, I think it's somewhere between 25 and 30 degrees. Gosh. So it it's, it's a bit of a logistics issue or a foundation issue. To, you can't just put down some easy foundations over a weekend than just uh, build something. You you have to actually think about <laughs> the construction. So either you and have it half it. buried or you have it on stilts. <laughs> yeah. And that's also why I was looking into using containers because then I could on the flat part at the bottom I could put one container on a relatively easy foundation and then I can put another one 90 degrees on top of that. So it's an uh, it's a two story L shaped configuration, but that will utilize the slope of the. Because of course I want one level to be electronics and fine metal working lathe and so on, and then of course all the woodworking at a separate room basically. Nice, good. and then you can have an, a, a little patio on the. On top of the the lower one, just cut a hole in the yeah, upper that, one. Yeah, that that was the plan. And when I started looking into using containers, there's actually yeah, several companies uh, around where I'm living that uh, they also deliver. It's container sized, but it's like showroom models. Yeah. Uh, so you have some of them with glass uh, on three sides. Some of them have uh, doors and like really nice like a office layout, but they are again a bit more expensive, but of course for the one where you're using like the office uh, space uh, video editing and so on on top, you could actually have the one with the glass uh, walls and so on. And then as you said, you could have like a patio on top there so you can sit outside, uh, drink coffee on the two nice days of the year. 
So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the thought is that if you treat them well, there is a decent resale value. Or if we move, I can just make sure that everything is secured within my workshop, but I don't have to move it out because someone can just come and lift them and then bring them to the next site and put them down again. That and that's cool, a tantalizing yeah. thought, <laughs> never having to move all that heavy equipment out of my workshop. <laughs> of it's really nice it's, having... Uh, it's really nice having two as well, because if you have one container, that's a container. But if you have two, that's a container complex. That yeah. sounds <laughs> much more cool. But then, of course, if I start, if I have two containers, I will have a larger floor space than I have today. But, of course, one container would be nice for all the woodworking. That would be sufficient for me. But I also would like to have one with a proper table and a bench and a welding setup and a grinding setup. And you don't want to do that in the same space where you're doing office um, no, no. and all the, so <laughs> in reality, I'm looking at a, a three container solution <laughs> and uh, yeah. What is the one? Just keep them stacking. <laughs> yeah. And that, then the neighbors are going to be very happy, I guess. <laughs> You, you did say you were from a shipping background, didn't you? Yeah, so that's uh, I might have fallen into the pot at a young age. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts of a big mural on the side just to to please or annoy the neighbors? Is it Maersk that's normally written on the side of a container? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's the that's the the thing with uh, like the showroom containers. Uh, they come in discrete colors, and they actually look like they're an intended uh, to be used as offices or something. So they should blend in nicely. And I think that corner of our lot is also not well. It's not blocking any view or anything. And we have a lot of bushes and trees uh, to our next door neighbor. So he should most likely don't see them at all except in the winter time when there is no leaves but then it's norway everyone is staying inside anyway so yeah <laughs> yeah but you need to brand it some way if you're going to use it for for behind the mistakes just have a big vinyl wrap of your face on the side of it <laughs> yeah yeah of course uh i i did see the the last video of Nerd Forge, and I really done like what they've done to their interior space, but also the the sheer talent in painting and doing like yeah. uh, if like if I can get someone uh, with that talent, then of course I would like to have a big mural on the side with the logo and everything, but that's <laughs> yeah, not something the... I can pull off myself. So this is no, the guy that the... this is the guy that has not told anybody as a YouTuber and now he wants the whole outside. <laughs> yeah, overnight. So I just yeah. discreetly make the foundation and then overnight uh, I have a big lorry with a crane just to ship them in schmack <laughs> and then the neighbor is waking up with his morning coffee. What the fuck is that? <laughs> the art's coming yeah. out in style. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's the plan for, for Maker Central. We have to chat up Martina and Hansi. <laughs> to yeah. help to do a collaboration <laughs> that's a good thing if you have your your daughter with you to yeah <laughs> to make the connection May, and if if i'm lucky then of course that's over half a year so so maybe that can be my four thousand subscriber uh <laughs> like celebration <laughs> new workshop B being realistic it's not gonna happen within the next year so uh but one is allowed to dream. Yeah, you should have some long-term plans that maybe never come to fruition. <laughs> fruition but yeah, we've we've just come to the realization that we've actually got no more room to build or make make new rooms out of anymore after I've done the office. We've yeah, so you're mo moving soon then. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the house is finished. <laughs> Let's move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's more or less it. <laughs> yeah, and then, of course, cool. someone else moves in, and we don't like what they did to this place, so uh, they're going to tear it down and start all over again. And that's yeah. the endless cycle. 
They've got a house with two hobby rooms each. What the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, that sounds reasonable. I I really don't think much about it, but like the last time when, uh, of course, uh, when we had the plumber over uh, and he did the connection within my workshop and I don't think much about it. So when he arrived, I just opened the garage door and I just see he just freezes when he sees <laughs> everything and he's like, crap. Uh, and it turns out the plumber is actually a carpenter uh, by trade, uh, but he, he switched to plumbing and he's like, wow, what what do you do for a living? It's like, what? This is, this is just a hobby. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've had a couple of, uh, like uh, last time we had someone over as well. Uh, I think it was the electrician who was going to check something, uh, inspection. And then it's like, I opened the garage door and it's like, holy crap. And then of course, uh, I think that made him not realize all the extension cords on extension cords on <laughs> extension cords for lighting and so on. <laughs> of course, it's uh, it's mostly LED lights, so it's not much uh, power consumption, but yeah. yeah building, building my new office the, um, the last couple of days, I've been um, looking at the electric cords. Now, where can I steal some power from for the lights in here? <laughs> Which one can I tap into <laughs> this time? <laughs> Well, I, I quite like doing all the electric stuff and just tap it into another wire. And I think if if I could choose today, I, I might have gone the electrician route, uh, also because the 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 freedom of doing your own electrical work, but also it's easy to be your own boss doing electrical work, yeah. at least uh, around where I live. Um, but it was really nice when we decided to redo or make a new bathroom and we realized we also need uh, uh, new power cables for that room. And then we realized that we just redo every electrical outlet in the cellar, basically. And then, of course, when we decided to do that, I just realized, okay, I have a couple of appliances in my workshop that really draws a lot of current as they are spooling up so i just talked to the electrician that uh, i really want uh, to beef up the power for the workshop so i actually got a i don't know what it's called in english but i i got to own like a, a splitter cabinet with the separate yeah. fuses and so on for the entire cellar and also for the workshop and then we converted from one phase to three phase into the house. The cablings was already there. It's just connecting them up and uh, changing um, some connection points uh, within the fuse box. Um, so now we have a lot more available power as well. Did you just have one phase before? Yeah. One single phase? One single phase. And of course, the it's coming in. In the top I thought of you the lived in wall. a civilized country. <laughs> yeah, and of course the the cables were terminated outside uh, the house. Um, in the it's coming from a like an old telephone pole, so it's a yeah. air, air cable coming in. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think all the circuitry and the entire house almost were ungrounded as well, at least the sockets and yeah. everything. So that's the first yeah. thing we did when we moved in because we did put a new floor in uh, and did a lot of work uh, in the upstairs. And then we just changed everything because I wanted grounded wires everywhere. Uh, and now nice, we yeah. did the same thing. Um, and then, of course, I wanted the, all three faces connected as well because yeah. I did... I couldn't run. Well, if I was running my table, so I had to wait uh, for turning on the vacuum because if I turned them on uh, almost simultaneously with a remote control or something, I just blacked out the entire house. <laughs> I mean, that <laughs> must, we... have been a, must have been a significant uh, fuse for the entire house if you're a single phase. Yeah, and... Uh, it was also weird because we had, of course, the the kitchen had 
I mean, the stove had its own separate fuse, but still that wasn't... I think it originally was grounded, but it wasn't. So uh, I asked the electrician that I think we should look at this as well, because this is not grounded. And he like uh, took out this uh, multimeter and was going to start measuring. And I said, you don't need to measure because if I... If I put my finger on the metal edge here and on the extractor fan over, I can actually feel the tingling in my fingers when I move them along the the metal. So uh, the, there is no grounding here whatsoever. And he's like, oh, shit. And that's probably been like that for years. And I took down a wall uh, and I also found the terminated virus within the wall where they have just clipped the virus. I don't even know mm. where they're going. So I, <laughs> so we had a talk with the electrician and I said, uh, I can open walls and pull all the corrugated pipes that is needed. So you don't have to do that, but we changed everything. So everything is new from the fuse boxes to the cabling inside, outside. So Good, uh, cool. I'm fairly confident that we're not living in a fire hazard. <laughs> yeah, or a death trap. I mean, yeah. that's something uh, when I we see from other countries. I mean, I, I think it's the same in, in England and in in uh, America as well, that a lot of things are single phase. Uh, and I mean, and people are, oh, yeah, we have finally got three phase and Every lit- I mean, the, the shittiest little student apartment I've had has always been three-phase. Everywhere is three-phase in, in Sweden. And you, you yeah. see, I mean, people in uh, in the States, oh, I'm building this new workshop. It's 200 amp single phase. <laughs> God damn it, the, the size of those wires. It's, <laughs> in, it's insanity. <laughs> insanity. Yeah. Especially about you having doing uh, rewiring on your house and ground and thing. We have one mystery switch in our house. At the top of the stairs, we have a switch that lights up, and I can't figure out what the hell this thing does. I've, you know, I've switched it. I've tried turning other switches on at the same time, and it just does nothing. But it does light up, so there is power to it. <clears throat> and when we re- I have one of I those. Actually, I actually replaced the switch identical because I was so scared in case it did something important. <laughs> <laughs> I have one that is uh, not connected, uh, but I have a plan for it. Um, but that is something I could have done because I have a box of old sockets and so laying around. So I could put one up on a wall and just not connect it or put a couple of meters of wires in just for the hell of it. So if someone opens it up, it's, well, it is connected to something and then they can flick it and nothing ever happens. <laughs> then you can write a note uh, which you tape to the end of the cable. So if somebody pulls it out at some time, it's like, Haha, you thought this was connected? <laughs> I mean, that was uh, one of the fun things moving to this house. I drew up the plans on on each floor, and then trying to figure out how the all the outlets and the and the switches were connected. And I drew out the electrical diagram. Oh, this goes here, and this goes there. And then during the years, oh no, this is wrong. This doesn't doesn't connect here. And then just trying to clean it up and everything. Every time I I did, I extended yeah. it or something like that. Just trying to expand on the drawing to to figure out how everything is connected. What I really liked in our house is that the old fuse box was in the crawl space in the attic. And today they really don't want to place them there because they should be more accessible. Yeah. But from that fuse box to every room in the house, it was metal tubes. So, which is not in use as a standard today, but of course now they can pull single wire um, through those tubes. And the electrician said that this is actually a good thing for your house because you can now easily have one fuse for every room, which is very nice um, because uh, I think uh, the way it was connected earlier was like the the half uh, of the living room and then half of the kitchen uh, were connected uh, on the same fuse as one of the bedrooms and it was a it was a mess but 
the layout of the actual pipes uh, where you could pull the cables through were actually one per every room. So what we did is we put a new fuse box in, uh, more strategically placed, and then we ran all the wires from there and through the old fuse box, but we removed everything in there. So it's just connections there. So it's like a... Just a conduit. Yeah, yeah, basically, but a big one where everything yeah. is really nice and it's like labeled for uh, like bedroom one, bedroom two. Uh, so it's very easy if you're going to change something or add something at a later stage. Everything goes from ev- straight up from every room and then meets up at that place. So it's very easy to work on now, which I like. Yeah, that's good. So the, I, told, I think I told you the other week, the all the electrics and the fuse board are in the toilet that I'm building at the moment, the bathroom. And I've just put cupboard doors on it. And it's really annoying that they've fitted all the electrics, you know, all the trip switches and everything, but they're all fitted at a slight angle. And it's really horrible to look at. It's like, why could you not just put it straight? <laughs> <laughs> it really just, it's, it's awful to look at. It's really messy in there. That's the... Uh... I I realized that I might not be like the average plumber or electrician, but I I hate, they don't care if it's a bit askew or whatever. But (laughs) of course I have, I have put up a fair bit of cable myself. And then of course the electrician comes and connect everything up and okays it. And of course, when you're doing the work yourself on your own house, you have a much more attention to detail. So it's the equal spacing between the clamps and you make sure that the wire is really straight, but you you can see where the electrician has done the work because he's just like, bam, 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 get it done, go to the next job. And then I'm yeah. going to sit there and watch it for the rest of my life being irritated. Why the fuck did he move that half an inch to the left? It's not, in symmetry with the window anymore it's like the the small details and of course i I think the last plumber we had felt it because that was during the pandemic so i was sitting permanently at the home office and of course i'm being curious and want to learn things so i just constant just standing behind him and what's that we're doing that why don't you do that oh smart (laughs) it's probably like why can't you just leave me alone Do you do much work at your house on the electrics, KJ? Or do you steer clear of it like me and my garden? I cheat quite uh, quite a bit. I do a lot more than I should should really. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I have basically everything except doing the, the journeyman part. You have to uh, work under a, under a certified electrician for like half a year or a year or something like that before you get the actual uh, actual you're allowed to to work on the circuitry so okay uh, and i have i basically meet all the requirements except that part right so i, <laughs> I yeah I, I cheat a bit uh but considering how how badly someone else cheated before me yeah all, I mean, all of the stuff I've done is has been up to spec, so no no one can can point at anything I've done and say that it's wrong. Yeah, uh, I think that's so. the same in Norway as well, uh, with probably slight differences. But that's the same in this house. It, someone else has done so much wrong that you you can't really do anything but make it better, no matter what you do. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said. Um, for doing electrical work in Norway, any electrical work on your house need to be by a certified electrician. And they are actually also then writing a report of what they have done and they're uploading that to uploading that to a central registry. Uh, mm-hmm. So that when the, the new owner buys the house, you also get access to that database. So we actually have all the documents on what's been done uh, wow. on, for instance, the electrical systems which is a good thing um but the funny thing is the the electricians that did the the first floor of course they changed out all the cables putting new sockets and so on and they did not specify in their reports 
how many sockets they put, where they put them. They just wrote, <laughs> changed all the sockets and uh, converted to grounded wires in the entire floor. So no matter what I put in extra now, that will be covered by their report. Yeah. So unless I just put in some things that didn't exist three years ago, then I'm fine. I have their report saying that they did everything on the first floor. <laughs> nice, nice. I don't think we have anything like that. I haven't heard of it anyway. Pretty sure we. But I think we do do things a bit different in Norway and Sweden. Yeah, most likely. But that's that's the funny thing. I mean, the electricians can basically charge what they want because you're not allowed to do the work yourself. And the the plumbers really want to be in the same position, but they really aren't. But Every time you're talking to them, they are wording themselves like, yeah, you need a certified plumber for this. You need a certified plumber for that. And that's really not a reality. Uh, the only thing, though, is that if you're doing all your own plumbing and then you have a flooding issue and then, of course, the insurance company comes around asking who did this and you put your hand up and uh, I did that myself, you might have a hard time arguing to get the the entire insurance <laughs> premium paid out because it's very hard for you to probably document that you did it according to the standard but our our insurance covers us for diy disasters that sounds nice yeah. do, do that insu- can i insure uh, do that work internationally or i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think people have probably heard enough about our electrical and plumbing issues. So I think we'll wrap up there, boys. Thanks yeah. for listening, everybody. And we'll speak to you next week. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.